Hey guys, take a quick look at the transition shield. Uh, it's already dark. Dang it. As you can see, it's starting to get darker and darker coming down. When I left the garage, it was completely clear, but now it's not quite so much. And take a look at the end of this ride. Poof, completely dark. Hey guys, this is a Climb Cryos Pro with Coroid. This is a brand new helmet that I've been wearing for about a month now. This thing is trick. Now what you see here is a shield that says transitions on it. So right now I'm going to walk out here to the front and you're going to see just how quick this shield changes. Now this Cryos Pro helmet is a phenomenal helmet. Start the counter now. I am fogging this thing up because I don't need to have it closed in order to see it change during the transition process. Starting to darken up just a little bit. So as I was saying, this is the Cryos Pro helmet. It has Coroid. Now Rez over here is wearing a different helmet. This is the Generation 1 of the Climb Cryos helmet. This one here has polystyrene or EPS liner throughout the whole helmet. This one here has a special substance called Coroid. And Coroid is a bunch of little plastic tubes that are welded together that have a 48% better crush rate than a polystyrene. Look at Rez's helmet though, isn't that cool? Now it's cool. Yeah, buddy. Oh, don't drop your bike, dude. That'd be bad. Dark Rez. So he's got the dark visor on there. I have the transitions visor. So just a minute ago when I was inside the shop, this one was clear. And now this is what it compares to the dark smoke colored shield. I don't know what that looks like yet because I can't see both, but it looks like it's pretty dark. Not quite as dark. So I've been in this Climb Cross Pro helmet for about a month now and I gotta say, on hot summer days, this helmet, boom, is the bomb. It is super lightweight and that choroid structure on the top allows it just to bend out the top like no other helmet I've ever worn. Um, the material on the inside that makes up the cheek pads is a very, very squishy material. It's, it's more of an open cell foam than any other cheek pad of any other helmet that I've ever ridden in. And that does a couple things. Number one, it doesn't put a whole lot of pressure against your face. I mean, it still fits well. You're still going to make the helmet fit according to, you know, typical helmet fitting procedures where you want it to be snug on the cheeks. Of course, you want the crown to fit. But the actual material on the sides doesn't put as much pressure against your face, even when it's properly fitting as the traditional helmet does. Now, the super aerated cheek pads is what I think makes this helmet even cooler than a lot of the helmets out there on the market. It does not hold moisture against your face. That moisture gets sucked from the outside or against your skin all the way to the outside. And it really feels like you have a, a much drier sensation against your skin. Now the other thing I want to say is with this helmet, if I spend 45 minutes to an hour off my bike having lunch somewhere and put my helmet back on, it is completely dry. I'm not putting a sopping wet helmet back on my head, which is amazing. I can say that the other helmets that I ride in, they have a much thicker foam around the cheek pad areas and the headliner, and I literally can come back the next morning and put those on, and they're still wet. It's disgusting. That is something that does not happen when I'm wearing my Climb Cryos, either the F5 or this Cryos Pro. Now let's talk about fit for a second. I typically wear a small in most all of my helmets. Um, if it's a larger shell, sometimes I go to an extra small. Um, in this helmet, I took a small. I still think that I really need to go to the extra small cheek pads and headliner to make it just a little bit more snug. I think it's just a, a hair... Hold on, see. It's a hair too loose. But uh, the extra small helmet itself was absolutely too small. So I'm kind of in between those two sizes. Now, I've had to really struggle to get a microphone to work inside this helmet due to the acoustics of the extremely light shell, number one, and number two, the lack of polystyrene, which is really an insulator. So 
any noise that happens on the outside of this helmet really resonates through the body. Now my microphone was picking that up and it was really annoying. So I've done all of my best efforts to make the audio in this helmet sound as clear as I can without any of those obstructions, but if it's so bad, I sincerely apologize. Now Clive's calling this helmet a four function helmet. Right now I've got this riding in the street setup, which is just uh, the transition shield with no peak visor. Um, you can then turn this into the adventure setup by having the drop down shield like this and then adding the peak visor to it. The dual sport setup is going to be to open up this visor up and put on a set of goggles. And then the dirt bike setup will be to remove this face shield completely and just have the peak visor. Now all of those changes are done toollessly via this little clip here on the side of the helmet. It simply has a half turn and then this little tab pops out and then you can remove the face shield and or the peak visor. The reason to ride this helmet without the peak visor is I really like the transition shield. Now all of the propaganda from Climb says not to run the peak visor while you're running the transition shield. And the reason for that is when you open the transition shield up and it gets blocked by the sun, by the peak visor, it makes irregular colors or irregular darkness in the shield. That can be a little bit distracting when you go ahead and put that face shield in the down position. Now the shell of this helmet is a full fiberglass construction, which makes it extremely light. That fiberglass shell coupled up with the corroid structure that's on the inside of this helmet makes it significantly lighter than those other helmets on the market in the same category. For example, the Rai X-T4 is about a pound heavier than this Cryos Pro helmet. Now at the end of the day, after putting in several hundred miles or just hours in the saddle, I definitely feel less strain and fatigue on my neck from wearing this lightweight helmet. A test that I want to do a little bit later, I don't know if I have time before I launch this video, but I want to wait until we have like a hundred and something odd day here in San Bernardino, California. I want to take some sort of thermometer and poke it through the vent hole in one of my other polystyrene type helmets so that I can see what that temperature is like on the inside of the helmet. I then want to wear this helmet for that same amount of time at that same temperature and see what the inside temperature of the helmet is. Now what I personally felt so far in the couple hundred degree days that we've had is swapping this helmet over to my Icon Air Flight helmet, I have definitely felt a difference in the amount of heat and sweat buildup that I get inside each helmet. I do believe that if I find a thermometer that I can put inside here, we will see a marked difference. Alright, now the majority of that audio might have been completely useless just because of the amount of wind noise that I get coming over the shell of this helmet. He said, because it doesn't have polystyrene, this helmet is very, I don't know how to describe it. It almost sounds like an echoey room on the inside. Any, anything that hits the outside makes this interesting hollowish sound when the wind you know, rolls over it and makes that, that roll over the top. It definitely is loud on the inside. I can't hear the noise um, per se, but the mic definitely picks it up and doesn't like the tone that it's at. Uh, the reason I like it is the fact that it's light. It's extremely lightweight. That makes this helmet lighter than my Rai helmet even after I have the camera and audio unit attached. Other than the lightweightness of this helmet, the huge benefit to me is the fact that it's way cooler than any other helmet that I own. I can wear this helmet back to back on the same day with my Icon Air Flight helmet and the heat buildup and the sweat retention inside the Icon helmet is dramatically more than that of this Cryos Pro. If you're looking for a lightweight helmet that is the coolest helmet I have ever ridden in, I highly recommend you take a look at this helmet. When you pick it up and feel it in your hands, it's kind of an odd thing. When I first picked it up and felt it and uh, the first couple times I wore it, it almost had a cheap feeling because it was so light. Um, it just didn't feel like there was much there. Um, and then when you, like I said, when you have it on, you open and close the shield, it has more of an echoey sound than a solid boom, dense sound. So it had this feeling of not being, you know, up to the same quality as the others. 
but after having worn this helmet on extremely hot days and being able to feel that airflow through this helmet be able to feel the lack of heat buildup and at the end of an entire day of riding uh, to feel the lack of strain that's on my neck and uh, my shoulders it's a huge benefit I love it I will have to say finding a good spot to mount a GoPro on this helmet was not fun and then trying to get the helmet audio dialed in so it was actually usable was not easy either. So if you guys have any questions about how I mounted the GoPro or how I ran the audio, just reach out to me um, with a message and I'll be happy to have a conversation with you if you have any of those questions. Oh, as far as helmet communication goes, I installed my Pack Talk unit onto this helmet because I really like the features and functionality of the Pack Talk. Um, it is Cena compatible. There is a Cena unit, an SRL unit, I believe it's called, that goes into this helmet so it integrates. Um, I opted not to go that route because I like to be able to transfer my main headset unit from helmet to helmet to helmet, depending on the type of riding that I'm doing and uh, the, the, the different type of bike that I'm riding. All right, well, that's what I have for you. Just a quick little walk around of the Climb Cryos Pro helmet with Colroyd. Oh man, check this out. The way that this helmet fastens, take a look at this red tab. You see me pull this red tab and the helmet strap comes out. You get it close and it connects. Super easy connection. This is called a Fidlock connector. Appreciate you taking the time to tune in and to watch these videos. If you like what we saw today or found any of this useful or informative, give me a thumbs up. If you want more action like this to come directly to your inbox, please hit that subscribe button and more importantly, the notification bell so you can be part of the notification squad. Until next time, as always, take care and ride safe out there.